Hello, Algebra 1, and in this video, we're getting ready for Section 7.3. A reminder to label and date all your work in your notebook and complete your written work in your notebook as well. That includes your daily grit, that includes your notes, that includes whatever problems that you're doing on IXL. Just do all your work in your notebook so you have a nice portfolio. So, Here's our grit for section 7.3. We're going to start by factoring out the greatest common factor. Remember, that's what we're going to look for first every single time. And number two, we're going to factor by grouping. Why grouping? Because there are one, two, three, four terms. So pause the video here and then work out the daily grit problems. So, let's check your warm-up problems. Remember, when we are factoring out the greatest common factor, it's best to use the factor ladder approach. And let's do that here. So first of all, if we have 15x squared y plus 20xy, first of all, just look at the coefficients. 20 and 15 are the coefficients. So the greatest common factor of 15 and 20 is 5. So let's take out the 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and then bring down the x squared y. 20 divided by 5 is 4, bring down the x, y. So we've taken out the coefficients greatest common factor. Now let's go after the x's. This term has one power of x, this one has two. They both have at least one power of x. So that's why we're going to take out x to the first power. So the 3 comes down. x squared divided by x to the first, 2 minus 1 leaves 1. Bring down the y. Um, bring down the 4. x to the first divided by x to the first leaves x to the 0. So no more x's. Bring down the y. Last step, take out the y's. They both have one power of y that we can take out. So what are we left with? The y's cancel, we end up with 3x. 4y divided by y leaves 4. So remember, here's our greatest common factor. Our greatest common factor is 5xy. The remaining factor that's left is 3x plus 4. We have taken out the greatest common factor. That was section 7.1. Number two, factor by grouping. We factor by grouping when there are one, two, three, four, or more terms. And when we factor by grouping, the first thing that we need to do is split our polynomial down the middle. I'm going to use my index card, and I'm going to cover up the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, I have 6 and 2. Now, you can do the factor ladder if you need to. I am going to assume that we're getting past that, and I'm just going to start taking out the GCF. So 6 and 2 are both divisible by 2, and they both have at least 2 powers of x. So take out x squared. What's left? 3x plus 1. Remember, there's a 1 there. Why? Because 2 divided by 2 is 1. x squared divided by x squared is x to the 0, which is 1. The 1 must be there. If it's not, it's going to be wrong. Let's do it again on the right-hand side. Remember what I told you? If there is a negative up front, then we need to take out a negative greatest common factor. So we're taking out a negative. Negative what? 15 and 5 are both divisible by 5. We're taking out negative 5. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is 3. Bring down the x, 3x. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is plus 1. Now, hopefully, we have exactly the same thing in both sets of parentheses. That's the whole strategy behind grouping. The 3x plus 1 is the binomial common factor. Bring it to the front, and what do we have left? 2x squared minus 5. So, those are the two warm-up problems. Let's move on into the lesson. The lesson is all about factoring a trinomial. Trinomial, three terms. 
So far, we factored by taking out the greatest common factor, which we will always look for first. Second, we can factor by grouping. We factor by grouping when there are four or more terms. The third factoring strategy is guessing and checking, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. Consider the trinomial x squared plus 7x plus 10. It is the product, which is what you get when you multiply, of two prime factors. We want to break the trinomial into prime binomial factors. Prefix by, two. So, does this have a GCF? No, there is no greatest common factor of all three terms. No, there is not. Well, let's consider its first term and let's consider its last term. X squared is the product that we get when we multiply the first sides together and 10 is the product that we get when we multiply the last sides together. You need to be thinking about the FOIL method here. First sides, outsides, insides, last sides. So, same polynomial, x squared plus 7x plus 10. So take a look at this factor tree that I'm making. I am making a factor tree, and we can do that with polynomials just like we can with um, constant terms. So look at what I have underlined in orange. x times x is where we're getting x squared from. This first term is the product of the first sides. Then, underlined in green is the 10. This last term is the product of the last sides, 2 and 5. We use the first and last terms to make an educated guess as to what the factors might be. Then we check. Remember, it's not guess or check, it's guess and check. Both are necessary here. So, x times x gives us x squared, 2 times 5 gives us 10. So, this is our guess. Our guess is going to be followed by the check. And to do the check, we just need to do the FOIL method here. First sides, x times x is x squared. Outsides, x times 5 is 5x. Insides, 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 5 is 10. When we add those like terms in the middle, we get 7x. No surprise there. So, the guess was proved by the check. Both need to be done every time that we do a guess and check problem. Here's another one. Factor the trinomial. Note in this one there are two plus signs. And when there are two plus signs, here's one thing we know that must be true. Both factors will have a plus. So if there are two plus signs, we will have a plus and a plus every single time. So, what we need to do here is make a guess. What times what is x squared? x and x. What times what is 16? Let's go 4 and 4. So this is our guess. Our guess needs to be followed by the check. So let's do the check here. Remember, we check with the FOIL method. First sides, x times x is x squared. Outsides, x times 4 plus 4x. Insides. 4 times x, another plus 4x. 4 times 4, plus 16. Do our middle terms add up to 10? No, they don't. So just put a line through it and make another guess. What's another pair of factors that will give us 16? 2 and 8. And do you think it might be coincidental that 2 plus 8 adds up to 10? It is not a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. First sides, x squared. Outsides, plus 8x. Insides, plus 2x. Last sides, plus 16. 8 plus 2, does it give you 10? Yes. This is our answer. This was our guess that we verified with our check. Guess and check. Factor this trinomial, x squared minus 9x plus 20. Note that we've got a minus first, then a plus. 
if we have a minus then a plus, our factors will have a minus and a minus every single time. So one more time. This is a minus followed by a plus. And any time we have a minus then a plus, we will have minus minus in the factors every single time. So we're going to undo FOIL here. So what times what is x squared? x times x. Now let's think about this. There's a 1 up front, and as long as there's a 1 up front, we can ask this question. What are factors of 20 that have a sum of 9? Well, 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 plus 5 is 9. So 4 and 5 have a product of 20, but have a sum of 9. So x minus 4, x minus 5. This is our very educated guess. Let's give it a check. Remember, you check these by using the FOIL um, strategy. F, or first sides, x times x, x squared. x times negative 5, negative 5x. Negative 4 times x, negative 4x. And then negative 4 times negative 5 is a positive 20. When we add those middle terms together, they're both negative. Add the numbers, keep the sign. We end up with x squared minus 9x plus 20. We've got a couple more. Stay tuned. So factor the trinomial x squared plus 8x minus 20. The signs are plus than negative. Now, it really does not matter what this sign is here. If the last sign is negative. When the minus sign is last, the signs will alternate. One sign is going to be a minus, one sign is going to be a plus when the minus sign is last. So we're going to make a guess. I'm not even going to put signs in yet. We're going to make a guess about 20. So let's look at the factors of 20 once again. 1 times 20 is 20. 2 times 10 is 20 and four times five is 20. Is there any one of these pairs that could ever add up to eight in some way? Well, one and 20 make either 21 or 19. Two and 10 either make 12 or they make eight. This is our pair that we need. We just need to figure out where the sign goes. So x, two, x, 10. So let's think about this, x times x, is x squared. x times 10 is 10x. Now if our 8 is positive, we need the larger number to be positive. So let's put a plus there and a minus there. x times positive 10 plus 10x. Insides, negative 2 times x, negative 2x, negative 2 times 10, negative 20. There's our positive 8x in the middle. This is our guess, which is our answer, and that's our check. Two more quick examples here. This one should look familiar. It's minus, then plus. Minus, then plus means minus, minus in the factors every single time. We're talking about 36. 36, pairs of factors of 36, 1 and 36, 2 and 18. 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. Which one of those pairs could ever add up to 13? The 4 and the 9. x minus 4, x minus 9. We can use this strategy as long as there is a 1 up front. This is our guess. Our guess is followed by the check. First sides, outsides, insides, last sides. So x times x is x squared. That was our first sides. Our middle terms, negative 9 and a negative 4. That sum is negative 13. This is our guess. Our guess was verified by the check. Last problem, x squared minus 5x minus 14. Remember what I said? If there is a minus sign for the last sign, 
the signs in the factors will alternate. One's going to be a plus, one's going to be a minus. We don't know the order yet. But let's talk about 14. 1 times 14 equals 14. But 1 plus 14 is 15. 1 minus 14 is negative 13. That's not negative 5. 2 times 7 is 14. 2 plus 7 is 9. But 2 minus 7 is negative 5. And remember, we can use that strategy as long as there's a 1 up front. This is our pair of factors that we need. So, x, x, x times x is where the x squared is coming from. 2 and 7, 2 times 7 is where the 14 is coming from. This time, my middle term stays negative, which means now I need my larger number, which is 7, to be negative. The 2 needs to be positive. Check it quickly with FOIL. x times x, x squared, x times 7, negative 7x, 2 times x, plus 2x, 2 times negative 7, negative 14. Check your middle terms. There's your negative 5x. That's your answer, verified by your check. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the first video for section 7.3. Homework will follow the next video.